This is part four of the lecture on relativistic dynamics. Specifically in this part of the lecture, what I'm going to do is apply the equation e equals mc squared, derived in part three. I'm going to specifically apply it to the situation that we looked at in parts one and two of the lecture, that is the one-dimensional perfectly inelastic collision. What we'll do is relativistically show now that the energy is conserved. So recall the details of that situation. Let me set up the situation now according to the stationary reference frame O. Okay, so recall what the situation looked like according to the stationary observer. We have relativistic mass M1, which speed V in this direction, relativistic mass M2, which speed V in the opposite direction. Okay, we calculated the relativistic masses M1 and M2. They were the same. If you recall from part two of the lecture, if necessary, by the way, periodically go back to your notes in part two of the lecture to refresh as I go. M1 and M2 were the same thing. They were both equal to the following quantity. Like so. So now using this portion of the expression, E equals mc squared, let's go ahead and total up the initial energy of this system prior to the collision. I'm going to call this E initial. So this is going to equal m1c squared for the first object plus m2c squared for the second object. That's the total energy of the system. So then therefore, because m1 and m2 are the same thing, take this and then essentially add one to the other, multiply them by c squared, and when you simplify, you ultimately end up with this. Okay, and then the collision happened. Okay, after the collision, remember that you end up with an object here that's at rest, V final was equal to zero, and it was a rest mass, capital M naught. If you recall, once again in part two of the lecture, we calculated what this rest mass was equal to. That rest mass was equal to the following expression. Like so. So now using this, let's go ahead and calculate the final energy of the system now, according to O, after the collision. We'll call this E final. So E final is capital M naught C squared. So it's equal to this quantity right here times C squared, which then therefore gives us this. Like so. And then notice that right here, the initial energy and the final energy are the same, conservation of energy. Okay, now let's take a look at the situation on the bottom board according to O prime, the moving observer. Okay, according to O prime, I originally drew out the situation like this. We had a relativistic mass M1 prime with V1 prime. We had a relativistic mass M2 prime would be two prime prior to the collision. We calculated what M1 prime and M2 prime were equal to. They were equal to the following. M1 prime was actually just equal to the rest mass, M naught. And M2 prime, through a long laborious calculation that I kind of skipped over in part two of this lecture, was the following quantity. This expression here. So now using these guys, let's go ahead and calculate the initial energy of this system according to O prime. We're gonna call this E initial prime. Okay, so E initial prime is gonna be M1 prime C squared plus M2 prime C squared. Okay, M1 prime was M naught, like so. And then take this expression here for m2 prime and multiply it by c squared. Like so, we end up with that. I'll just keep it like that for now. Okay, now the collision happens. Let me do some erasing. I don't need these guys at this point. Okay, the collision happens like so. We end up with an object that we called capital M prime, and it had a V final prime associated with it. Capital M prime, however, was equal to the rest mass capital M naught divided by the radical. Once again, we saw this in part two of the lecture. Okay, right here is capital M naught 
plug it into the numerator of the expression to get this. Like so. Once again, we saw this in part two of the exercise or part two of the lecture. If necessary, go back and refresh in your notes. Okay, now using these quantities, let's go ahead and calculate the final energy of the system after the collision. We'll call it E final prime. So E final prime is going to be capital M prime times C squared. So this guy here times C squared, and that then gives us this. Like so. Okay, now, if the energy is conserved, this quantity here should be equal to this quantity. So let's see if it is. In order to do so, I'm going to have to add these two terms here together and see if, in fact, it's equal to this quantity here. So off on the right-hand board, what I'm going to do is get a common denominator between these two terms and add them up, and then let's see what we get when we do. All right, so over here, E initial prime is now equal to the following. This quantity here with the common denominator. So, okay, and then I've got my second term, like so, and then my common denominator, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify there in the numerator. Okay, so m naught c squared times 1 plus m naught c squared times 1, there's two of them. So, and then I have here negative m naught v squared, c squareds cancel, and then positive m naught v squared, the c squareds cancel. So that term, or those terms, drop out completely, and then we have the denominator. So, now right there is E initial prime, the energy of the system, according to O prime, before the collision. Right here is E final prime. Notice that they're the same, energy is conserved. Okay, I will conclude our lecture on relativistic dynamics briefly with a part five in just a few minutes.